Hi, so today I want to talk a little bit about the library we're bringing to you, Scikit Spectra for spectroscopy in Python. And in particular, we're going to focus on the GUI system that we put together, which utilizes the IPython notebook widgets to form a nice basic GUI for a lot of the mundane things in spectroscopy. Uh, before I get started, I want to point out that we have a website now, Scikit Spectra. Uh, that's Hug Adams, GitHub, IO, Scikit Spectra. And it's still coming together. Um, so the right now all the tutorials are in IPython notebooks, and we have an examples gallery in the works. Each of these notebooks, if you open it, looks something like this. It has a basic um, run through of most of the functionality. But anyway, let's focus on the GUIs. So before I get started, I just want to thank uh, these these three gentlemen who've really helped us out on the mailing list, both with Pandas and on Python questions. And without their help, we definitely wouldn't be able to present this to you today. So I want to say thanks to them. All right. So you see what I'm, uh, let's get started. From scikit-spectra.data, we imported two of the bundled data sets. This includes nanoparticles in water and nanoparticles on glass. These are data sets that we took in the lab and what they correspond to is for nanoparticles in water, we added nanoparticles to a cuvette of water. We recorded the resulting spectrum by shining a white light through it. And then we added protein and the protein bound to the gold. And we observed that. And for glass, we have gold nanoparticles that self-assembled into a monolayer on a planar piece of glass. And we recorded the light reflectance as a function of nanoparticle coverage as the nanoparticles accumulated on the glass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read in both of these data sets and I'm going to change them to their time units to seconds, which because these data are timestamps, they're date time data, and we're telling Scikit Spectra convert those to time intervals in seconds. So we can go ahead and just plot it um, using the plotting API. And it looks something like this. So this first curve in blue, this is t at time equals zero. And then at some point later, we added the gold nanoparticles in the water. And the change here is due to the nanoparticles absorbing a lot of the light that was coming through the cuvette. And time on this axis would be running in the color. So blue is time zero, and red is time later. And that's going to be measured in seconds. So we could do a lot through the API, plotting, slicing, sampling. But instead, we're going to use the graphical user interface, which is written in the notebook. So the way to do that is from scikit-spec.interact, we import a spectrum model and a spectra GUI class. To the spectrum model, we pass in one of our spectra objects. In this case, we're going to do the nanoparticles in water, which I've named NPs1. That's going to return this traitlets model. The traitlets model we pass into the GUI, spectra GUI, and that uh, builds this notebook GUI and then to run it I just put it as the last variable in the cell and that's going to output something that looks like this. So This is our GUI. It has a lot of different elements. Um, the first thing I want to show you is the plot. So we can look at a lot of different plot kinds that are supported in the Scikit Spectra API. So for example an area plot will show the area as a function of time this major drop is from adding the nanoparticles to a blank cuvette. This, major, this second drop is from adding a protein to the nanoparticles, and this was another protein. You see that the time unit is in seconds, as I converted earlier. Maybe we're more interested in a contour plot. Maybe we want to plot the 3D contour and so forth. There's a lot of plot types that are supported. A wire plot It's a 3D representation. Uh, the waterfall plot is using Matplotlib's polygon library to generate a semi-transparent 3D plot. Um, so all of these plots are supported in the, in the GUI, as you see. We can do a lot of cool things with the plot. If we want to look at the color bar, just select it. Um, it's supported for most of the plots. So let's go back to our original uh, spec plot we can change the color map so I can change this to any of the matplotlib color maps let's just pick uh, for now let's pick this one 
it's kind of a cool one. And if we don't want to use a color map, we can change the color to a solid color like red. But I want to use the color map, so I'm going to go back and let's say pick dark too. All right. Uh, the next thing that we can do is we can normalize the data. Normally in spectroscopy, you don't look at the raw data. You look at the absorbance data or the transmittance data or the percent transmittance, which is a normalization procedure. So in this case, let's look at absorbance, which is dividing the data set by the first curve and taking the log base 10 of that. So here's the result, which kind of shows what's going on in the data set. What you see here is the visible uh, light region, and what you're looking at is the surface plasmon resonance peak of the golden nanoparticles in the water. And down here in the, uh, UV in the UV region, you're seeing the molecular signatures of the proteins and probably some other things like citrates and whatever else is in the nanoparticle solution. So this is the data set that we're mostly interested in because in nanoscience you can quantify the amount of protein binding to your protein, the amount of protein binding to your gold particles from the amount of shift in this peak called the plasmon resonance shift. Um, what we want to do is we want to isolate this. Now again, we could do this through the API, but it's easier to come into the GUI and slice the data set. So along the spectral axis, this runs from 200 to 850. Let's cut it to about 400 nanometers. And we could cut this back to about 700 if we so choose. We can change the sampling. Um, if we say wanted to sample this by 10, it's going to change the uh, spectral resolution, which in this case is not all that useful. But it is useful to change the temporal resolution in this case if we want to resample, that's going to show less curves. But I'm going to work with all the curves. And we could also change the starting time. For example, if I cut this back, it's going to cut out the last curves in the set. Um, something like that. Let's go ahead and restore that. We'll work with the entire data set. Um, so I want to isolate this region. The easiest way to do that is to turn on the interactive mode. Doing so will replace the matplotlib static plot with an MPL D3 plot. Um, and these are interactive in the browser. So what we can do is we can come in here, we can choose the, uh, the box zoom, and we can focus right in on the data set points that are interesting to us. And right away I can say that the plasmon resonance shifted from about 525 nanometers up to about 528 nanometers, which is about what you'd expect from a semi-large protein binding to these gold particles. Um, let's go ahead and go look at our other data set. So remember I had a variable called NPs2, which corresponded to gold nanoparticles on glass. Um, I can load that directly in from the namespace of the IPython notebook, as long as I use the right variable name load and that's going to bring in that data set. Uh, what's going on in this data set is kind of interesting. So let me turn on, the, let me go to the advanced plot settings and let me turn on line selection. So this is one of the plugins for MPLD3. Pretty soon we're going to support a lot more plugins. Uh, right now this is kind of the only one that we've we've built into the GUI. What that's going to let me do is it's going to let me highlight the lines that I'm interested in selecting. So what's going on in this data set is at the beginning we have a piece of glass and we start to add gold particles. And as we do that, the absorption properties of the glass change. In general, they start to absorb light, so the ref total reflected light off of that system drops. And that's what you're seeing in this initial drop. However, as the nanoparticles build up, they start to form a mirror-like surface, and that actually scatters light. And so at some point, there's an inflection where the, mirror, where the surface becomes more of a mirror, and the light reflectance, especially out towards 500 nanometers, takes off like crazy. So that's what's going on in this data set. Um, and what I want to show off is how we can manipulate this data set in the GUI and then export that back into the namespace of the notebook. 
Uh, also, just want to show you that we can change the plot size in real time. So let's make this a five by four plot, just for the sake of showing it off. It's all uh, responsive in real time. We can apply a function, so maybe I'll square the data, lambda of x, x squared. And apply that. So just some interesting things we can do. So maybe we're only interested in this peak down here. So let's go ahead and set that to um, say about there. And that should focus in on this peak. takes a little bit because this is triggering a lot of redraws. So that's that's a nice peak. And maybe we want to change the spectral resolution. And we can cut out some of the time points by resampling in time. And now I want to work with this data set. Maybe this data set is really interesting to me. So I want to do further work through the API in the notebook. So we can call this subset or we can we can name it whatever we want. I'm going to name it subset. Let's call it subset MPs2. And we'll export the data set. And that's going to call save to namespace, i.e. the notebook namespace. Now I can come to a cell later on in the program. And I can access that variable. So I called it subset MPs2. And here it is. If you're not plotting it, what you get is the HTML output similar to a pandas data frame because these scikit spectra objects are leveraging the pandas library to do all their heavy lifting and all their real work. And if we plot this, you'll see it's the same plot we generated in the GUI. So we're really happy to present this. We think we've come up with a cool solution to GUI when you want it, API when you need it, and um, we have a couple more GUIs to come. We're working on a two-dimensional correlation spectroscopy GUI. And if you like this project, if you're interested in the GUIs or if you're interested in the spectral libraries, so once again, the website is hugadams.github.io, scikit spectra. And we're official now. We're on PyPy. So look us up and we'll be glad to be in touch. All right. Thank you.